Hi everyone, welcome to Tuesdays with Rachel. This week I have a very special guest with me. I am so excited. Dr. Joan Cotter will be talking about a recent discovery she has made when using the AL abacus for multiplication problems greater than five. You know, the hard ones. <laughs> She's calling it shortcut multiplication. And as a bonus, she will also share with you shortcut division, also using the AL abacus. You are going to love it. For those of you who are not familiar with Dr. Cotter, she is the author and founder of Right Start Math. She is one of the most creative people I know. If you meet her, you will very quickly see her passion for learning and helping others to learn, particularly children. I don't have time to list all of her qualifications, but here are some that you may or may not know about her. She graduated from the University of Wisconsin with an engineering degree. Now this was during a time when women engineers were few and far between. She was also a Montessori educator, a special needs tutor, and a middle school teacher. Plus, she designed the AL Abacus, which we do use in Right Start Math, and it is also what she is going to use today to show you her newest development to help children learn multiplication and division. She's calling it Shortcut Multiplication and Shortcut Division. Here is Dr. Cotter. I'm going to show you about shortcut multiplying, which actually is in level D. This presentation won't make much sense to you unless you're familiar with grouping in fives, and I hope everybody is. You can multiply up to 10 times 10 on the AL abacus. That should be a given. And you're curious about why things work. So let's do seven times eight. I'm using the bottom two wires of the abacus. Put seven on the second wire from the bottom and eight on the last wire. And this method was used in the Middle Ages, so it's not that new. Now to find the tens, notice the number of dark colored beads, the blue ones. And we can see there's two and three or five. So 20 and 30 make 50, that's our tens. To find our ones, we look on the right side and multiply the three times the two, and we get six. So seven times eight is 50 plus six, or 56. That's cool, right? Let's do another one, nine times seven. I'm putting nine in the second wire from the bottom, seven on the bottom wire. The number of tens is 40 and 20, which is 60. And the number of ones is one times three is three. So the total nine times seven is 63. Now the beauty of this is that you can actually do this in your head. You can see these numbers in your head. Now here's why it works. Okay, there's a seven n times eight. Remember we had 50, we had five tens. So there's five tens, but there's a little problem up there. On the right, we have that rectangle of three times five. Where is that? Actually, it's right there. Amazing. And then to get the ones, remember it's three times two. There it is, two times three. So there is our answer. Seven times eight is 56. You could actually, if you wanted to, take the, these up here and actually move them over here. But I think it's easier to see it this way. Let's try the, our other example, nine times seven. The number of tens is 60. But again, we've got those, the one times six is missing, but it's lo and behold, right over there. And then our ones is one times three, and there it is on the, on the bottom wire. And I always said I could prove this algebraically. It's quite easy if you know elementary algebra. But now you can see it physically why it works. Here's another example. This is a little, has a little something different in it. Six times six. The number of tens is 20. But then we've got that two times four. We'll move that over there. Four times two. And then we have four times four is 16. There it is. So six times six is 20 plus 16, 36. And this also works 
even if this, one of the factors is not five, even if it's less than five. But when you do this, you have to take into consideration how many you're missing, how many yellow ones are missing. And they must be subtracted. So let's do nine times four. There's nine, four blue beads on the second row from the bottom, which gives us 40. Then we have to subtract 10 for the missing yellow one. So that's 30 is our tens. Then to get our ones as usual, we multiply one times six is six. And the answer then is 36, which indeed it is. Now, if wherever you can multiply, you can always divide. And two days after I figured out why this works on the abacus, actually it was 1.30 in the morning, one evening when I couldn't sleep. Two days later, I figured out how you can do division on this. Now I'm writing the problem both ways, as a division problem and missing factor problem. So let's do 72 divided by eight. Now we know we have one factor, which is eight, so I'll put that on the second wire from the bottom. But we don't know the bottom one. But we know the number of tens has to be 30 plus what will make 70. It has to be four. So let's put on our nine. And now let's check the ones. Two times one is two. It works. 72 divided by eight is nine. And I think it's helpful to see it the second way. Eight times nine is 72. Isn't that cool? Let's do another example, 48 divided by six. We know the first factor will be six. And how many tens do we need for the second one? Well, 10 plus what makes 40? It looks like it's gonna be 30. Now let's check the ones. Four times two is eight, no problem. Okay, let's try 42 divided by seven. We enter seven for the first factor and to find the second one, 20 plus what makes 40? It's going to be 20. Now let's check the ones. Three times three is nine. Uh-oh. 40 plus nine does not equal 42. So as often happens in division, we have to go down one. So instead of trying a seven, let's try a six. 20 plus 10 is 30. And the ones, three times four is 12. 30 and 12 is 42. It works. And as somebody pointed out last week, the reason this happens is that there are two products for seven in the 40s, 42 and 49. The eights don't have that and the nines don't have that. So it's the, it's the seven that has this problem, but that's okay, it's very easily solved. And the interesting thing is you can even do this, like we could even do 43 divided by seven. You could do it with remainders. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I think it's just, you have to play around with this first to understand that. Thank you, Dr. Cotter. Wasn't that fantastic? I told you, you were going to love it. I know you're already wanting to go search for your AL Abacus to try it out, but don't go yet. I have a few closing comments. Several weeks back, I recorded Tuesdays with Rachel video on helping your child learn multiplication math facts. If you're watching this video because you're working with multiplication math facts with your child, uh, you may want to go back and view that one. Also, if you found this video helpful or you simply enjoyed watching Dr. Cotter, uh, click the like button. If you know someone whose child is struggling with multiplication, forward this video to them so that they can also learn as well. Join me next week as I talk about whether or not you should consider teaching math during the summer months. So until next time, have a fabulous week.